Mimelzan, named for a turn on the Le Mans race course. Kind of a cheeky thing for a car that is some 16 feet long, some three tons of girth, some 700 foot-pounds of torque. This, in many ways, is the ultimate Bentley. And ours has some of the most trick tech you'll find in any back seat on Earth. Let's drive this 2012 Mulzan and check the tech. Now, the Mulzan is a far less known Bentley compared to the Continental GT, which is in every rap video and CEO's driveway from coast to coast and around the globe. This guy's a rarer bird, but has some similar athletic lines, including this very coupe-like D-pillar back here, and also this kind of powerful haunch line back here, which is a Bentley signature. They call it the power line or something. Spot a Mulzan thousands of yards away by its very evocative giant dual headlights reaching back to the look of Bentley's in W.O.'s days. And the fenders and quarter panels with all these complicated creases and shapes are largely one piece. They do some nice aluminum forming on this car. Now, Bentleys can be used as a car you drive, but they can also be a car in which you are driven. That's where the back seat comes in. Phenomenal. Let's go to what you may think is your usual picnic table. Even Jaguars have these. But it's not just a picnic table that is powered. But if you push this button on the corner, we have the optional integrated iPad with the wireless keyboard. Pretty slick. And of course, the iPad here is 3G, so it's got its own connection. But that's part of a theme where this is primarily clever fitment more than technology. Now, the other interesting piece of technology in this car lives in the center console. We don't have all the goodies, but we do have our own climate system, our own reclining massage seats, and you can get a cooler back here, basically a champagne fridge with a frosted glass front door that has the bottles canted in such a way that a partly consumed bottle won't spill. CHP is going to love that. And you've also got a remote here so you can run the front head unit. I can change the channels, I can change the volume, I can drive the first row people nuts. And this isn't even all the toys, folks. If you get the theater option, you end up with a 15.6 inch center display that shows up here, and all that ties into the car's system and to a Mac Mini they mount in the trunk, and it's connected wirelessly. And if that's not enough, everywhere you look, here and in the front, nice cast metal polished ashtrays. This is another world. Now, before we examine the usual technology in this Bentley, let's examine the tactile technology. As they like to say, everything that looks like something in this car is what it looks like. Leather, obviously, is leather. Polished steel, this is actually polished steel. These look like glass covers on some of these buttons. They're cold. They are glass. And even these little poles here for the vents, they feel like they're pulling some kind of a valve back there to open the air, but they're actually not. They're just electric switches but they dampened them to feel like they're pulling a valve in an older car. Now we get to the real hardcore tech. By pushing the screen button and 007-esque, you get a peaky boo screen. Many of you will recognize that as a slightly older Audi interface. 8-inch screen, non-touch. You've got a knob to turn here. you got a little mushroom button in the middle you can move around. It's just a little bit too fussy for my taste. Four buttons around here that correspond to four menus in the corner of the screen. And then, of course, your dedicated buttons around it. All the major media sources, though, are without apology. You've got everything you'd want in this car. Bluetooth streaming, AM, FM with HD radio, switchable, satellite radio. Over here, you've got your option for, let's see, a six-disc CD, two SD cards. And then if you want to hook up other options, here in this nicely lacquered lined tray, you've got one of these little pigtails that goes to the Audi media interface. And this one, for example, is for iOS devices, older iOS devices, of course. Plays DVDs as well when you're parked, and you've got good meta tag information while streaming, at least on my Android 4.0.4 device on our day of shooting. We have the optional name audio system, high-end English stuff. Gives us 20 speakers around the cabin, 2200 watts of power. However, the problem with high-end audio systems that really are high resolution is they make low-res sources sound even crappier. I'm looking at you, satellite radio. Rear camera is good. Nothing cutting edge here, though. It gives you some trajectory. It gives you distance. And you can also change it up to be for either alignment of parking. Oh, by the way, check out the tech. Notice anything odd about it? The red line. 4,500 RPM. What is this thing, a UPS truck? 
That's the kind of grunt they've built into that motor. It's not about thrashing it. It's about low-end torque from the get. And nestled here in the bow of our Mulsanne is one hell of an engine. 6.75 liter twin turbo V8 doing 505 horsepower and 752 foot-pounds of torque. That's enough for three normal cars. You've got to have that, though, because this guy weighs damn near 6,000 pounds, yet it gets to 60 in a sprightly 5.1 seconds. The downside is the MPG, 1118. There is a gas guzzler tax, as you might imagine, and I think we're averaging about seven in the real world. Another interesting note about these, these guys are all hand-built. Old Steve Brown put this one together. Hopefully he had a fireproof apron, because when this car is running, you can't touch anything north of the doors. If you hit a pedestrian, I'm not sure you're going to kill them or cook them. Oh, by the way, this car has cylinder deactivation. It can shut a few of them down when cruising to save gas. Imagine what it would consume if it didn't. Ah, this is a nice place to be. Driving this car is not so much driving, even when you are at the wheel, as much as it is being transported. You're so separate from the world and the road, which has its ups and downs. It has massive power, of course, but you've got to unbury yourself from so many gears in this automatic. Even when it's in sport mode, like I have it now, it always feels pretty not ready to romp. And this car porpoises quite a bit as you get the power on. Forever, the hood is rearing up and dropping down, which is kind of a real old school thing. That said, it feels light on its feet for the kind of car that it is. Now, what this car is really about is about changing the very nature about getting from here to there. The way you know it in other cars is completely different in this car. You almost arrive energized from the experience of driving, and I'm not making that up. And I must also say Bentley has done a really nice job of making a cohesive design language across this cabin. There's a consistency of quality feel throughout. For this price, there better be. So in sum, it's a car that transports you more than being about driving. It doesn't do a whole lot for me as a driver's car that's asking a lot of it. This car wants to be used as a motor car, not a sports car. Okay, we're gonna price this guy. You better sit down. Base is 345, 320. Gas guzzler tax, 3700. Destination, 2595. To get the iPads on those powered picnic tables with keyboards and a wireless hotspot as well, add 336. Or really go CNET style and step it up to what they call the theater spec. That includes the whole iPad package, but also the big drop down center screen with that champagne fridge, a 64 gig iPod touch, and a Mac Mini in the trunk that lives in its own electric power drawer. Wireless keyboard and mouse, that raises the option total to $58,000, and now you're somewhere north of 409.